How's it going everyone? In this video, I'm gonna go over three ways guilt can hold you back in life. So some people suffer or feel guilt more often than others do, and it's something that's pretty common. Uh, when it is too far to one end, and it can start holding you back in life in a number of ways. And at the core, let's just talk about guilt for a second, right? It's, it's sort of this feeling that is often associated with uh, either a specific event or just generally you feel guilty. And it's more this general feeling that seems to be miscalibrated, right? Usually when it's locked in on a single event, you kind of know what it is that you feel guilty about. Now that can start spilling over and you can start feeling guilty about that specific thing all the time. But those two different pieces, right? Basically just feeling guilt all the time doesn't really serve us especially well. And one of the really critical problems that can arise is that feeling guilty all the time can impact self-worth. And once self-worth, you know, when you don't feel worthy and you don't feel good enough and, and those kinds of things, it can really hold us back in a number of ways and make our lives significantly worse. So what we're gonna talk about a little bit in this video is how those recurring feelings can get out of hand and how they can really stop you and why it's worth sort of looking at them and, and working through them uh, and making yourself get to a better baseline and a better relationship with this emotion. So the first thing that is a problem is that guilt can stop us from pursuing goals. And again, this goes back to that piece around self-worth, right? So when we feel kind of bad all the time, uh, because we feel guilty, we feel like we're not good enough, uh, we feel like we're not able to complete certain things or that we shouldn't complete certain things, that in and of itself stops us from trying at things that we actually should be doing. So for example, if you wanna go up for a promotion or something and you have this general feeling of guilt, you might think or have thoughts or allow thoughts like this to stay in your mind like, oh, well, you know, I'm not really good enough to do this job or I don't really, I'm not gonna deserve it or I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do it if I get the job. And these kinds of thoughts, especially giving them a lot of time and effort and attention, will stop us from doing these kinds of things, right? If we, if we go back to this promotion, you're not gonna go up for it. You're not going to try to get promoted if you don't think you deserve it or that you can't do it or that you aren't the right person for the job. So that's one of the big reasons to start working on these feelings of guilt is they're going to come in and kind of fight with you whenever you want to accomplish anything. Now, the second big problem that arises when we just have this everlasting guilt is that we allow others to treat us poorly and don't really do anything about it, right? Because again, at the root, if this guilt is is impacting your self-worth and making you feel like you deserve to be treated poorly, then you're not going to stand up for yourself. You're going to allow situations to happen where you are being treated poorly. And you're gonna think, well, that's fine because I deserve it for whatever reason. And that's you know not a healthy place to be in. It can also create this situation that's that kind of puts you on both ends, right? Where on the one hand, you know that you shouldn't be letting people treat you poorly. And then on the other hand, somewhere deep inside because of these habitual thoughts and feelings, you think like, okay, well, I guess this is justified, right? It can kind of be a mixture of both. And that's where it gets uh, a little bit complicated, right? It's not just like, oh, I always accept this, but it is how you can end up getting into these situations over and over and over again because on the one hand yes you know it's not quite right but on the other hand you have these patterns that you're just allowing to replay over and over and if you don't resolve these feelings of guilt these kind of constant underminings of your confidence and esteem then you are going to be more likely to get into these sorts of situations now the other piece of it is it can go so far as to you just allow it to happen intentionally because you think that you're not worthy or that you shouldn't be around or something like that. And that's at the most extreme end. So again, it's really worth going through some of these emotions and working through them. Now, the, the last piece, and again, this goes on the more extreme or heavy end of the spectrum, but the third piece is that guilt really slows down any recovery that, that you wanna make from any other sort of problem. So uh, it kinda goes back to this pursuing goals piece, right? In, in the positive sense, it, it stops us from really making progress. And also when we're in a more negative place, it kind of helps stop us from getting to baseline. Because basically if we don't feel worthy, again, if this guilt is impacting our sense of worth, then we're not going to feel like we should or can ask for help 
or get the resources that we need to resolve some of these other issues because there's going to be this little voice, this little piece that says, well, you deserve it because you're guilty. And when you're guilty, you need to atone. So this is going to fix it. But the problem is when it's habitual like this and it's applied to everything, it doesn't fix anything, right? Making yourself feel bad or allowing yourself to feel bad doesn't fix anything. It doesn't make anything better and it doesn't absolve you of your guilt. So it's really working against you on, on a number of angles and it's not really helping you make any progress. Now, the question is like, oh, well, why would anyone be in this trap? Now, the question arises, so if that's the case, why would anyone be caught in this trap? Why, why are people doing this? Um, and what happens is we get into these habits, especially if you're in a situation or a set of situations where either the social environment pushed you to feel guilty about a number of things, which is to say you took a number of different actions, most of which were probably in good faith and got your hand slapped and people said like, oh, why are you doing this? Oh, why are you doing that? Oh, you're screwing this up. Oh, this is wrong. Oh, you're not doing this right. And enough of that happened that you built up sort of just this habitual response of feeling guilty all the time and, and all the time going like, oh, I probably shouldn't be doing this. This is wrong. Uh, I shouldn't be having any of these things. And then that filters into your self-esteem. Or the other thing that can happen is a, a bad enough instance of one thing, uh, you know, you doing something that you feel like can't be atoned for, or can't be fixed, and then it's just this permanent guilt. So a couple of ways to start working on this or start thinking about managing feelings of guilt, right? The first thing to think about is what what is guilt, right? What is the point of guilt? Now, this feeling, right, guilt is an emotion that allows us to feel when we've done something wrong and feel like we need to do something to make it better. Now, when this is pointed and it's attached to a specific instance and it's attached to a specific action, it can be really useful, right? All emotions are useful in some way. It's just a matter of figuring out how they actually work. So when guilt is operating correctly, basically what happens is you do something, let's say that you, I don't know, step on someone's foot, right? On accident. Uh, you're gonna feel some guilt probably and the appropriate action here is to apologize, right? And that was a mistake. And another way that guilt, and I think we should touch on this here, but another way that guilt can filter in is uh, you doing something intentional and it hurting someone and you feeling bad about that. And so let's say another situation here is uh, if, if you're in a relationship or something and let's say you lied to your partner or cheated or something, right? The guilt that you feel associated with that is because there is some sort of action you need to take. And the reason it hurts is so that you can remember it. So it's salient, right? Because we remember things that are emotionally painful. So when you feel that sort of guilt, it's it's kind of your mind and your body saying like, okay, we don't want to do this again. We want to remember this. This was not an action that had the outcomes we hoped for. And we need to take some sort of action to resolve it. So the reason I'm bringing all this up is because that's the way that you can start working through some of these guilt problems, right? You can look at whatever the situation is, and it's important that you are able to pinpoint a situation. If you're just constantly feeling guilty, then you're gonna need to look at the actual habit, right? If, if you're just feeling guilty for no reason, then there is some sort of pattern that's developed in your brain that you need to learn to cut off. And that's another way that you can potentially work on this. But in the general case, you need to look at the things that you actually feel guilty for, and then, determine whether or not those things make sense and then determine what you can do to take action or to avoid that kind of behavior in the future. And once you've kind of looked at the situation and, and done those things, then it's about processing the emotion, which basically means like sitting with it, accepting the situation, accepting what brought it up and realizing, okay, these are the options that I have for taking action. This is the feeling. It's okay that this feeling is here. I'm not going to sit here and dwell on it, but I accept that that's the way that I feel. And then allow that feeling to exist. And then take the actions that you need to take and keep moving forward. Now, obviously this is easier said than done, right? It's much easier to say, oh, we'll just feel the feeling of guilt and let it go. It's not always that easy. So, you know, some of the pieces that go along with that are kind of working through, okay, when this thought comes up, oh, I have this thought of guilt, working through, okay, what does that mean? Where did it come from? What actions can I take from it? What can I learn from it? How can I, you know, accept this emotion and let it pass through me? And then also, if you can't find the reason, kind of going, okay, what is the pattern here? What can I do to change this pattern? You look at each piece of the process and start breaking it down and looking at ways to, to sort of change the relationship. Again, it is not easy, 
But over time, if you do this enough times, you catch these thoughts, you break them down, you figure out what's going on, you're going to start resolving some of the underlying guilt and some of the underlying patterns. Now, of course, if it's serious enough and you're not making progress and it's not working, you're gonna wanna look for heavier resources, right? Maybe that's therapy, maybe it's books, maybe it's other things related to guilt. Uh, but at a surface level, those are some of the things that you can start doing to start working down some of your guilt so that you don't have those problems that we talked about in the beginning holding you back in life. All right, on to the reflection questions. One, what's something you feel guilty about? Does your guilt make sense for that situation? What actions can you take and what can you learn? Two, when are you most likely to feel guilt that's not tied to an action? Consider a few more productive thoughts that you could use instead. So hopefully that helps you think a little bit more about guilt why you really need to get it resolved and how it can hold you back and then ways that you can start working through it this video is based on a, a post that we have on howtohappy.com uh somebody else wrote it it's a different angle different perspective so if you want a little bit more on this topic that's a good thing to check out other than that that's all i've got for this video so as always if you have any questions comments topics you want me to cover throw them down in the box below i'll get to them as soon as i can and i will see you next time thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video please take a second to subscribe as it really helps out a lot if you're looking for more content there's all sorts of information over at howtohappy.com. And if you want something a little bit more condensed and concise, I've also written the book Mindscaping, which is essentially a framework for optimizing happiness. So we'll have the link there as well. And that's all I've got. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.